Hey guys! So in today's video, I thought it would be a good idea to show you guys how I run my business. So as you can see, we're in my office here, and I have some candles that I need to label, and I also have some orders that I need to ship out. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the process of me labeling the candles to packing the boxes, like creating the boxes and putting them together, and then all the way up to packing the orders, writing the thank you notes, and dropping off the orders at the post office. So if you want to watch that and you want to learn a little bit more about how I run West Novelties, keep on watching. First, you know I gotta give a shout out to my very much appreciated Patreon members. Thank you guys so much for your support over there. I hope you're enjoying all of my content. And if you want to get to know me on a deeper level, you should definitely join my Patreon. It's a great way to connect with me outside of YouTube. All right, so I have all of my candles right here organized by scent. So right here, we're gonna start out with my Falling For You candles. So I have them right here. And I made a big batch of candles last night. So I'm getting a lot more streamlined with it. So I'm able to get more candles made in less time. And it's just fun learning something new every time I do this. Okay, so let me just do a sniff test to make sure they're all the same scent. Yep, falling for you. Okay, so I'm just taking a paper towel right now and getting all the fingerprints off the glasses. I like to do this before I stick on the labels just to make sure that they are nice and stuck on there and the glass isn't all smudged up. So I have my labels right here in this big folder and what I do is I design them on this software that I use online and then I will then save the picture and upload the picture to the website and sort of position the design on the label to make sure it looks all right. Eventually, I would like to print my own labels here in my office, but I need a nicer printer for that, and I just need to learn a little bit more about how to do that because I really like having the glossy labels. As you guys can see, they're kind of shiny, and they're also waterproof. So, fun story. When I first started my candle business, I brought my first ever candles to my friend's house for a pool party and when he saw me and I handed them to him he had wet hands and he grabbed it and the label got destroyed like instantly so at that moment I knew I needed to spend a little bit more money on the waterproof labels okay so I do like to align a little bit with the wick before I put the label on to make sure that they're all uniform then I'll measure about an inch up from the bottom of the jar, make sure it's nice and flat, and then just stick it on like that. So I don't like to rush through this process because I just want to make sure that all of the labels are straight and aligned with the jar. So I like to take my time a little bit with this. So there's two. And the labels, the candles get more than just this label. So hang tight and I'll show you guys what else I put on the candles before they're ready for sale. Every so often when I make batches I will get a couple duds. Um, sometimes I'll make a mistake like I'll cut the wick too short which that actually happened with a candle back there and um, or just other stuff like I put the label on crooked or there's not enough wax in the jar for me to sell the 10 ounce candle. So, you know, I think with any small business or any business in general, quality control is so important to make sure that you're getting out a good product. Okay, so next what I'm gonna do is tip the candles upside down, make sure the label is facing forward. I just reorganized my office and like moved my furniture around. And I think in a past video I told you guys that I do that all the time. Like even growing up, I used to move my furniture around and my dad would get so mad at me because I have like the craziest layout in my bedroom. I'm trying to figure out how to make this office as efficient as possible. And I really like this new layout, so bear with me if I look a little bit disheveled right now. These labels just tell you how to burn the candle safely. 
and how to prevent anything bad from happening. So they're very important. So there's that, as you can see, it's in line with the label. So I'll set these over here. And there's one more step before these falling for you candles are ready. And I started doing this just a little bit ago because I discovered that I like to enjoy my candles sometimes without lighting them, especially when it's a brand new candle. And the cool thing about these dust covers right here, the cool thing about these dust covers right here is that they protect the candle, of course, from dust. So you can take the cap off the jar and just sort of leave the candle there um, exposed to the air. And also, in storage right now, all the candles have these dust covers on them. And when they're in storage, part of the fragrance actually soaks up into the dust cover. So I discovered that you can actually use these dust covers as like an air freshener in itself. And I actually stuck one in my car, right in the cup holder, in the bottom of the cup holder. Um, it works as an awesome air freshener. So, you know, fun little tip that you guys should know. And um, I just like the extra protection so the wax is nice and smooth when you guys get the candles and there's no risk of anything happening in shipping. I started using these last year when I was making my wood wick candles. Okay, so there is my Falling For You candles. These are ready for sale. At the end of the video, I'll show you guys if you want to see how I update my inventory. So I'm gonna go put these in my storage room. I always set the newest candles at the back of the row just to make sure that, you know, the candles that have been sitting there the longest, they get sold first. Just, just to keep things moving smoothly. So this is like a big restock. One of the things I do wish I had in this house was more hardwood floors. The entire upstairs is carpeted and I used to really love carpet, but now that I'm running my business and, you know, doing my webcamming and my other stuff like that, it's hard to keep the carpet clean. It really is. So I just wish I had more hardwood floors up here and that's something I will definitely look for in the future, wherever I live next. Because I love doing crafts, I love painting, I love doing this, and part of the reasons I don't make my candles up here is because it's all carpeted. I tried to do it for a little while when I first moved here, and it, I just felt like the carpet was holding the fragrance and just kind of... I didn't feel comfortable making candles on carpet. I even put like a, a packing quilt on top of the carpet as like sort of a rug protector, and I just didn't like it. So now I make my candles downstairs in the kitchen, and then I bring them back up here for labeling and putting them into the inventory, and then they go back downstairs. So, they, you know, they kind of go on a little journey. <laughs> um, that's just how I do things, so, right now. Okay, so these are my Granny Smith candles. Love these. Very sweet, aptly vibrant scent. Part of the reason I wanted to start sharing more with my business is because, I don't know if you guys saw one of my previous videos, where I mentioned a YouTuber that I used to watch who just about inspired me to start my candle business. Well, I went on her channel, I think like a week ago, and I found out that she did post a video and give an update on like what happened, which I thought was great. And she basically just said, I lost interest in candle making and I told myself at the beginning that if it ever felt like a chore, that I'm not going to keep doing it. Listen, I'm not judging anybody, but running a business in general requires work. It requires long nights, and I think I can say that wholeheartedly for you guys because that's the lifestyle I'm living right now. Um, but I just felt like, wow. So when things got a little bit difficult, you left. Like, okay, I mean, it's not something I would do, but I respected that she came on and, and sort of gave everybody an update. She did say that she might come back one day, but part of the reason she deleted her videos is because she was getting questions and comments every day of how to 
you know, do this to a candle or how to do this. And she was just like losing interest. And it's just interesting. I need to find a new YouTuber to watch. There's a couple that I watch that talk about candles and candle making, but she just had such a calm demeanor about her. And it was such a nice thing to look forward to every time she uploaded because I learned something new every time she uploaded. And um, when I first started my candle business, I went off of everything she said and like all of the suppliers, the label software, the jars. And then I sort of found my own way and started creating my own way of doing things. That's when the magic really starts to happen. And here are the Granny Smith candles. They are ready to go. So I only made three of these because I wasn't as low in stock. Next is pumpkin drizzle. Yep, pumpkin drizzle. So I'm really making it a point to stick to a two video a week schedule. And I'm happy that I've been able to do that for the last week. And um, you know, I hope you guys are enjoying the videos too. Also, I love when you give me suggestions of things you would like to see, so don't be afraid to let me know if you want to see something in particular, or if you want to see me travel somewhere, or do something extracurricular. Let me know, because I like to make videos that you guys are excited for. But yeah, this is where all the magic happens. This is my office, and I feel so lucky every time I come in here and work, because you guys... For so long, I've wanted a space like this, where I can keep my desk, I can keep all my paperwork and stuff like that, and just sort of shut the door at the end of the day. You know, in my last place, my 500 square foot apartment, my desk was in my bedroom, I made my candles and shipped out my orders and, and packed all my orders in my living room. So I was just sort of living around that stuff. And it, listen, I loved every second of it, but I knew that I wanted to have a dedicated office space like this where, you know, I can just come in here, get my work done, have everything that I need. And um, it's just a great feeling. It really is, it's a great feeling. So there's pumpkin drizzle, another great candle, very fall, okay. Looks like I need to get another thing of the dust covers. And I'll show you guys in a little bit when I get to that portion of the video, but I do like to check the candles, of course, one last time, do a one over, and make sure that nothing happened while they were in storage. You know, just another quality control, because you never know what can happen. So I'm gonna finish up these last batch of Moonflower and Musk candles, and then when I come back, we'll move to the next portion of this video. All right, you guys, so I got all my candles labeled and in inventory. So now I'm gonna make some boxes. I'm still working on getting some custom boxes. I'm just sort of trying to find the, the right supplier for that because they're really expensive, but these do the job and they're nice, hearty cardboard, you know, nice and sturdy. So let me just show you guys how I put these together. And I like to do this before I pack each order because it's just nice to have a couple boxes on hand that are ready. It saves a lot of time also. I used to buy the cheapest packing tape I could find just because I thought tape is tape. But I realized pretty quickly that you gotta get the nice stuff if you're gonna be shipping a lot. So I used this Scotch Sure Start Strip. <laughs> Plus another good thing about it is it's not super noisy when you pull it and tear it. A lot of those really cheap tapes are so noisy and it just, it saves a lot of headache to spend a couple more bucks on some nice tape. And these boxes are mainly used for the Rustic Ambience collection. As you can see, there's just enough space in there for them to be nice and snug. All right, so that box is ready. I actually need to go get some more of these. Probably do that today. I really want to share a story with you guys. It's kind of embarrassing because it's never happened before. So I think I'm going to save that for the end of the video when I'm not tied up. Actually, I could just share it. Why not? You guys probably saw my video where I showed you my Halloween costume and 
you know, I, I put it on and I got ready for what I thought was going to be a Halloween party. Turned out I was an entire week early. Still don't know how that happened. Because <laughs> I was planning for the party all week. I looked at the event on Facebook multiple times. Could have swore it was for the 21st. Turns out it was for the 28th. So I got to the house and cars all over the driveway, Halloween decorations. I think there was even some like spooky music playing. So I thought, all right, you know, then I went up and knocked on the door, no answer. Rang the doorbell, no answer. So then I checked my Facebook and I realized that the event is for this coming Saturday. Anyway, I apologized to my friend and everything and I told him, hey, I'm sorry I showed up a week early. I thought the party was for tonight. He was very understanding and, and he just kind of laughed it off. He's like, all right, well, I'll see you on Saturday then, okay? So two days ago, I was doing something. I think I was driving and I got a message from him and I couldn't read the message because it was too long. So I saved it in Snapchat and then I pulled over and I read it and it basically said, hey, I have to disinvite you to the party because the guest list got out of control and we're just going to keep it to close friends. And I just felt like, wow, that's never happened before. And that's a pretty crappy thing to do. I mean, I know the guy pretty well. I've seen him out and about. I met him in person. Like, I thought we were friends, but um, he is married, and I don't think his husband really likes me for some reason, because his husband's always been pretty catty to me. So I don't know what happened, but now I'm not going to that Halloween party. So I was kind of upset, and I was just like, oh, whatever, you know. And I don't let myself get too upset with stuff like that anymore. I sort of just chuck it off to everything happens for a reason. You know, there's a reason I showed up early. There's a reason I'm not going to be at the party. So be it. Well, I did just find a new event slash block party to go to on Saturday. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I think it's going to be even more fun than this house party would have been. Because there will be a lot more people a lot more action, a lot more energy, and um, that's what my Halloween weekend plans are. I just wanted to share that with you guys because I wanted to know what you thought. Like, would you ever disinvite someone? Do you think it was an excuse he made up? Do you think it was a lie he made up? I talked to a bunch of my friends and they were like, that's such a lie. Like, no one does that. So I think he's just probably I don't know. I, I just keep going back and forth in my head. Is he mad that I showed up early? Did I knock too many times? Did his husband tell him to disinvite me? He deleted me off the Facebook invite and everything. He just said, hey, I had to remove you from the invite list because the guest list got too crazy. Bad planning on my part. Sorry. So I gave it like a day and a half. And yesterday, I finally was just in my head thinking, like, this dude isn't my friend. You know, like, why, why am I still allowing this guy to see, like, my Facebook posts, my Snapchat? Because he gets really flirty. He's in a, um, I'm putting him on blast, okay? I don't even care. You guys don't know who I'm talking about. But he, he's really flirty, and they're in an open relationship. So maybe he thought that, we were gonna hook up that night and I showed up with my buddy and he felt like, okay, well now it's not gonna happen so why don't I just not invite him anymore? I don't know. This is the problem I run into hanging out with gay men who have other intentions and, and different agendas than what you have and just wanting to be friends. It sucks, guys, because the amount of friendships that I thought I had that come to an end like this just because they realize that I'm not trying to hook up and it will never happen. I mean, it's just something I grew up with, even with my girlfriends growing up. I had a bunch of girls that were my friends, who I thought were my friends, and then they would end up getting into fights with each other and they hated my other friends that were girls and I never understood why. And then I realized that once I came out and they all started falling off like flies, 
it all kind of made sense. So it's just something that I need to learn to live with and learn to just not get upset by. So that's my little story I wanted to share with you guys. I am really looking forward to this block party though. I'm still going to wear the western cowboy costume. And just so you know, I bought that costume. I spent like 70 bucks on that costume just for that party. So yeah, I was pretty bummed that I had this nice costume and now I'm not even going to be able to wear it to the party. Okay, so here's the next box and I like to use this box in case someone orders my fall candle collection from last year or any candle collections from last year because I used a smaller jar. So here's the jars I used last year compared to the ones I'm using now and as you can see they are a bit smaller. So those are 8 ounce candles and the ones I sell now are 10 ounce candles. So just a little bit bigger. So I get these boxes from Uline and they're okay, they're just not very pretty. Like these are the same boxes I started my company on and they get the job done but as you can see they're not the prettiest thing. So with these what I'll do is take the center just to kind of hold it together. With these boxes they're kind of just folded into themselves so you need a little bit of extra like glue to keep them together. But there's three boxes right there. So now what I'm going to do is start packing the orders. I have my order list right here. I'm still old fashioned so I like to write everything down. It seems like I don't remember anything if I don't write it down. Um, but let me start preparing everything for the orders. So I'm going to be packing three orders for you guys today just for the sake of time because of course I'm going to be packing more but just for the camera you guys will see three orders. So what I do first is write down the name okay and then I'll stick it on the box and I'll keep these on the boxes until I put the shipping labels on them. They all start to look the same, they start to feel the same, and if they don't have these little post-it notes on them, that's not good because I put my thank you notes in each of the orders, so I would hate to send Terry's order to Tyler, you know what I'm saying? So, that's all. Maybe one day I'll find a faster way to do this, but until then. Here's actually a box that I put together already because I wanted to see what this tape looked like. I just got this special delivery tape and I really like it. It's super strong. It's very noisy though, like when you when you take it off and tear it off, but here's what the box looks like with the tape on. I just wanted to see it. So I'm going to use this one instead of my Uline box. I'll save that one for a different order. Let me pull up my website real quick. Okay, so the first order is going to be for a rustic ambience bundle. So let me just get some of those for you guys. All right, so here we go, the full rustic ambience bundle. So I just started using this bubble wrap to wrap all of the candles in. It's very safe, very uh, protective. Let me show you guys what I used to use. Now this is what I used to use. I still use it sometimes for certain things like if you purchase a necklace, because the necklace already comes in a nice velvet jewelry box. So I'll just wrap it up with some of this. Or I'll even use this for like my VIP candle collective candles because the candles are a lot smaller and they're, they don't have much of a chance of breaking within um, the shipping process. Let me just do this step real quick. This actually comes perforated, so I, I'm gonna rip off first. I'm going to take my bubble wrap, set the label down first, start wrapping them up. Almost like a Subway sub. Alright, so there's one. I do try to get all orders out within three business days. I do still have a day job, if you will. Some people probably wouldn't even consider it that, but I have been webcamming since 2017. It's the longest job I've ever had. And it pays the bills right now. So that's what I do during the day. And when I'm not doing that, I'm usually 
doing something like grocery shopping or paying bills, walking lucky, or doing this. So I like to do this. My favorite time to do candle orders or just anything involving my company is in the morning. I'm such a morning person. Once it hits like 2 p.m., I just, I start getting tired and like weird. People are different though. Everybody's different. Some people kind of turn on after noon. I'm kind of my best before 2 p.m. So that's me in a nutshell. I'm gonna take my packing peanuts. Not too many. Start placing the candles. Like so. There's even some space to add some extra packing peanuts. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna write my thank you card. What I've been doing, instead of using just a basic black pen, is changing up my colors for each note. And sometimes I'll even draw a little picture on this portion of the thank you note. Okay, I am gonna show this thank you note just because I don't think I've ever showed you guys what I write in these notes, but I'm sure Mr. Reggie won't mind. So right here, as you guys can see, I drew my little cactus and sunshine, which it's just my little trademark picture. It's not actually trademarked, but it just says, Dear Reggie, thank you very much for supporting my dream. I hope my rustic ambience collection brings you joy. With love, Richie West. So that's kind of along the lines of what I put into the thank you notes. Sometimes if it's a very big order, I'll include an extra candle on the side and a little bit extra in the thank you note. But I want you guys to all know that I, I love and appreciate each and every one of you who support my business, even if it is just one candle or a smaller order. It just means the world to me because it gives me hope that I don't have to do webcamming forever and I don't have to use my body forever. Like It just gives me hope that my dreams can come true if I just stay persistent and stay focused. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the envelope. I take my paper shreds, or whatever they're called. Go like this. Just to sort of cover up the packing peanuts so it's a nice presentation when you open your box. And then I place the thank you note right there. Make sure none of the paper is sticking out of the box. I don't know what kind of tape this is, but it's so sticky and strong. Okay, just like that. All right, and then the last thing I do before I put the label on it, the shipping label, is of course, place the fragile sticker right on the top, just like that. This guy is ready for a shipping label. So I'm gonna set this aside and continue on with the last two and then we'll move to the computer portion. <laughs> okay, you guys, so I got my three orders packed up and now I have my shipping website opened, not mine, but the one I use, it's called Pirate Ship. And the really cool thing about this is it scours the internet and finds the best rate to ship your item, whatever you're shipping. So if you guys have never checked out pirate ship and if you ship a lot of things from home and you don't like to show up to the post office and have them weigh it out and you know pay for the barcode there it's so much easier to do it at home so let me show you guys what I do okay and it's a 12 inch by 6 inch by 6 inch box which I already know that and I already weighed them out but I'm just gonna make sure that I got the right weight so this is just kind of a model to show you guys how much shipping typically is. So for that, shipping is going to bring me up to $10.32. And that is for an estimated five day delivery. Now you can go all the way up to like right here, priority mail, which you can get it delivered in a day. 
but it's going to cost you $67.55. So I wish I could do that right now, but, um, you know, maybe in the future I'll give you guys the ability to purchase different shipping times so that you can get your order quicker if you want to. But as of now, I just have free shipping and I take care of all the shipping costs. So this is going to South Carolina. I think the farthest order I've received so far is from Australia. That's just very exciting to know that I can make something here and it will end up in Australia. And I've never even been to Australia, so it's just cool to me, you know? I just had another one in Finland. So we're worldwide, baby. I really want to show you guys the, how the label prints out. And um, when I purchase these labels, you guys, you should automatically receive an email with your tracking number. That's why I put the email in the shipping information because every time I do that, you guys will receive a tracking number so that you can keep track of your package, you know, and, and get updates of like when it's delivered, if there's any delays. So I've gotten it pretty much down to a science and uh, I really enjoy what I do. Thank you guys so much for using your Candle Boy promotional codes. Um, I've noticed that a lot of you guys that watch my YouTube channel purchase my candles and that just is awesome to me. And that's the biggest thing I wanted to see with creating that code is, is to see like how many of you guys actually purchase my candles that watch my YouTube videos. And I was very pleasantly surprised. So thank you guys so much. All of you that have placed your order on westnovelties.com. Also, that code is still active. So if you guys want to save 10% off your entire order on my website, westnovelties.com, use the code CANDLEBOY in all caps at checkout, and it will take 10% off your entire order. Plus free shipping. I mean, you cannot beat that. You cannot beat that. So just so you guys know, all of these orders and packages are insured up to $100. So of course, for the Rustic Ambience collection, it's worth more than $100. But I, I just want you guys to know that if anything ever happens in shipping, all I need you to do is send me a picture or send me a screenshot of a failed delivery notice or anything like that, and I will completely reimburse you or just send you a whole new collection. Because I want to make sure that you guys can enjoy these candles if you're spending your hard-earned money for them. Alright. Well, let's go.